Hello, algebra students. Mr. Lawrence here, and yes, you are reading the screen correctly. We are going to learn to add and subtract. Now, look, I've taught you some stuff. The problem is you guys don't do it. Okay, you need to be doing one of the methods I show you, at least until you've mastered it. When we add problems like this, or we add 10 to the negative fifth divided by 10 to the negative second, the vast majority of you cannot do that problem right. And the vast majority of you did it in your head. There were a few of you that did what I said. But you think you know the answer, and so you do it in your head because it's simple, and then you're getting it wrong. Now, look, I know it's simple, okay? But I've mastered it. I can do it in my head. I'm willing to write it down to show you. You need to be willing to do that, too. When I'm dividing like bases, I need to subtract the exponents, right? And so I have negative 5 minus negative 2. Well, negative 5 <coughs> minus a negative 2 is the same as negative 5 plus 2. The two negatives cancel each other out, right? Okay. Now, even though some of you might know that part, you still get this part wrong. Okay? And it just, it just doesn't make any sense. You're, you're doing too much in your head. For whatever reason, you know, blame calculators, you know, blame Santa Claus. I don't care what the reason is. You cannot get through high school level math or, you know, even algebra, just algebra one. You can't get through it successfully getting, the, you know, earning your best possible grades when you don't know how to add and subtract. And that is correct. You don't know how to add and subtract. Okay, you're saying, yes, I do, Mr. Lawrence. I know that five plus one is six. How dare you insult me? Well, yeah, but the average first grader knows that too. 10 minus three, seven. Okay. The problem wasn't you can't do 3 minus 10. And it doesn't mean you as an individual. I'm just speaking about the, the class as a whole. I throw 3 minus 10 at you and you freak out. So I want you to use one of these techniques. Okay. And I want to see these techniques on paper. If you're not getting right, you're not using the techniques, then that's just stubbornness. Look, if you're getting them right, I could care less. You do it however you want. But the vast majority of you aren't. The first technique I'm going to demonstrate is a counter technique. This is a three positives, right? Now, I like this for its visual aspect. I don't like it because it's not very practical when the numbers are large. The absolute values of the numbers. But I'm going to demonstrate it. I have three tenths, uh, excuse me, three positives. So I wrote three pluses. I have ten negatives. Positives and negatives cancel each other out in addition and subtraction. They turn to zero. 1 minus 1, that's what this means here. This means 1 minus 1. Well, that's 0. Okay? This means 1 minus 1. 0. I know that's confusing some of you because you're thinking, well, wait, in multiplication, the negatives cancel. And I get you. What's actually happening is positive 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay? This is also 0. Oh, what's left? Well, there's 7 negatives left. Yeah, that is the counter method, where you put down a number of positives, you put down a number of negatives. If I do negative 2 minus 5 in the counter method, I put down two negatives, because <coughs> that's like negative 1 minus 1. I mean, that's what I did. I just broke negative 2 up into negative 1 minus 1. Negative 5, I'll need five negatives. Now, I don't have a negative 1 and a positive 1 anywhere. No. What do I have? And that's kind of cool because I actually ended up looking like the answer. I actually have a negative 7. All right, so this is the counter method. It gets less practical when I do a problem like this. Okay. I've got 10 positives. So there's 5. And there's 5 more. And then I have 12 negatives. 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so what's going to happen? Positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 1. They're all turning to 0. Positive 1, negative 1, 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 positive 1, negative 1. Okay. What's left? Two negatives. 
So that's doing the counter method. I love it for its visual aspect. I don't love it for <clears throat> its uh, lack of practical uh, practicalness. If I have to do 45 minus 80, I don't want to draw 45 positives and 80 negatives. I don't want to do that. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate a couple other methods. Okay, next is the number line method. And again, it's a good visual. It's a little impractical at times, but it works pretty well. If I have a number line, oop, that doesn't look like a number line, doesn't have any arrowheads on it. Okay. And I am here at positive three. How do I know I'm at positive three? Because I start the problem with positive three. Now let's see. I'm going to go ahead and number those. Okay, so here's my number line. I'm at negative three. I'm excuse me. I'm at positive three, and I have to move ten in the negative direction. And the negative direction is to the left. Numbers get smaller, right? So I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh. So negative or three minus ten must equal negative seven. Okay, good. It's very visual. It's very visual, and I love that aspect of it. I really don't want to do a number line when I have to deal with, uh, you know, negative forty-five plus eighty or something like that. Okay. Well, here I have a number ray. I'm going to turn it into a line. Okay. So. I'm doing problem number four. I decided to do it on this number line over here um, instead of reinventing the wheel. So I start at negative two and I have to move five in the negative direction. So one, two, three, four, five. And so negative two minus five must be negative seven. And that's what I got the first time. Again, I'm just modeling this different ways. I'm requiring you to show one of these ways. We are going to work on this. And we are going to have this skill mastered. This, you should have mastered this way before you got to me. Okay. So here's a 10 plus negative 12. Okay, so in this one, I have, um, you know, I'm going to change the order here. I didn't want to make them all the same way. I just realized I did that. There we go. Let's make the problem negative 12. Oops. Let's make the problem negative 12 plus 10. Okay. Uh-oh. There we go. Okay, so I start at negative 12, and this time I'm going to move in the positive direction 10 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I end up there. So it must be negative 2. Okay, so that's the number line method. Now another method that you could use would be uh, to learn the rules, okay? And that says this is for addition or subtraction. If the signs are the same, then you add and you keep the sign. Okay, so for example, 3 plus 5. Do they have the same sign? Yeah, they're both positive. So I add the two numbers, 3 plus 5 is 8, and I keep it positive. If I have negative 7 minus 10, are the signs the same? Absolutely. I add 7 and 10 is 17, and I keep the sign. Okay. The negatives only cancel out when they're right next to each other because that's like a multiplication situation. If I had 5 minus negative 3, that's really 5 plus 3. Okay, These negatives would not cancel each other out. They wouldn't. Okay, I mean, would these positives turn to 0? Would this turn to 0? Of course not then this can't turn to zero either. 
because the signs are the same. When the signs are the same, it's actually an addition problem in disguise. Okay, so you add and keep the sign. Now, if the signs are different, well then you're going to subtract and then which sign do you take? You take the sign of the number with the greater absolute value. Okay? Take the number of the sign with the greater absolute value. So if I have 10 minus 2, well, the 10 is positive and the 2 is negative, right? 10 minus 2 is 8. Which one has the greater absolute value? Well, you should remember absolute value, distance from 0 on a number line. The 10 does. 10 is farther away from 0 on the number line than negative 2 is. So it's a positive 8. If I have 5 minus 7, well, 7 minus 5 is my subtraction, so I get a 2. But then I take the sign of the 1 that is farther from 0 on a number line. Negative 7 is farther, so it's a negative 2. Okay? If I have negative 8 plus 4, the signs are different, right? I'll do 8 minus 4 to get 4. But negative 8 is farther from 0 on a number line than positive 4 is, so it must be a negative 4. So that's learning the rules way. Now there's one more way I like to teach this. Hold on one second. Okay, and this way is to think about money. And whenever you have a positive number, positive is money in your pocket. Okay? Negative is money you owe me or somebody else. Okay? And you always pay your debt. Always pay your debt. Okay. So, you see this positive 3? I would tell a money story. It's a positive 3. So, I, I have $3, okay, but I owe you $10. So, I have to give you as much as I can. I, I don't have enough to pay you, but I give you the 3. Now, I only owe you, I owe you $7. So, I have $3. I owe 10 I have. I still owe you seven. Here, I owe you two dollars. Now I owe you five more dollars. I must owe you a total of seven dollars. That's a negative thing. I owe you money. On this one, I have ten dollars. I owe you twelve. Yeah, I just ignored that double sign. I can just take that right out. Okay, I owe you twelve. I give you what I can. I still owe you two dollars. Okay. If I had negative 6 plus 8, well, I owe you 6. You come to see me. I have 8 in my pocket. I give you 6 of it. What's left? I have 2. Okay? So, I want to see you using one of those four methods. I don't mind which one you use, but when I see you getting these wrong in class, I'm going to be uh, asking you which method are you using. And I want to see something down on paper. I don't want you doing it in your head until you are able to do it in your head correctly. We can't get out of Algebra 1 doing these things wrong. All right, Mr. Lawrence signing off. Good night, everybody. Buddy.